How's it going guys? MMA Professor. Wasn't going to do this video, but I'm going to do it. New Year's Eve. Uh, so let's just get straight into it. Not, might not do too incredibly well on this. Uh, I don't like to, you know, tell you that ahead of time because you might shut off the video. And then what did I make this fucker for? No, but I didn't do as much research as I normally did with this one. Um, and this card is really difficult to predict as it is. There's a couple coin flips on this one and some, you know, interesting fights. So, no particular order as per usual MMA playground order. Uh, Dustin Poirier against uh, Josh the Flute Grispy. Um, I don't really know much about Poirier. Um, I know he absolutely smoked Zach Nickelright in his last fight, and he got, you know, out-wrestled uh, for three rounds, basically against Danny Castillo in his first fight. And... You know, even against Mickelwright, yeah, he kind of mauled him, but he was kind of jumping in with looping punches. And uh, Grisby just needs to control the distance. He's really long. He's pretty huge for 145 pounds. Control the distance. Uses jab well. Gets in close. You know, he does what he does and get a guillotine, <laughs> basically. Uh, I'm going to go Josh the Flute Grispy first round tap out due to a submission. Jeremy Stevens against Marcus Davis. Davis didn't look terrible at the weigh-ins. Um, you could tell it was fairly difficult cut for him. He's not used to cutting weight all that much. Jeremy Stevens is a monster. Um, basically, if you can take him down or I'll point him, you can beat him. Um, but you get in a slugfest, he's got more power than you. I mean, even, you know, in his fight against Sam Stout, I mean, technically he was losing the fight, but he made up for it with raw power. He landed the bigger power shots, and that's what won him the decision in that one. Davis is probably the more technical boxer. Don't think it's going to matter. He doesn't have KO power. Yes, he's KO'd Jason Tan and Jess Laodon in his but I mean, that has more to do with somewhat accuracy. But, I mean, he got tooled in the stand-up against Nate Diaz. I mean, he just looks terrible lately. So, I'm going to go Jeremy Stevens' second round TKO. Mike Brown against Diego Nunez. This is a closer fight than people are, you know, giving it credit for. Mike Brown, former featherweight champion. Uh, I think in this fight, you know, Diego is very good. Not time. Time out on the field. He's good at a lot of things. Um, his wrestling offensively, eh, his jiu-jitsu is fairly underrated. He's got good hands, lacks KO power. Um, he probably can outpoint Brown, uh, but I see in the you know Brown pushing him, you know, uh, kind of not chasing him down, but kind of walking him down, having. Nunez is back against the cage. Uh, he's going to, you know, always has his threat of the big right hand. Uh, good uppercut as well. And he's going to win in the clinch, and he's going to get some big takedowns. And I see Mike Thomas Brown winning a unanimous decision. He may be able to put Nunes away, but um, we're going to go with it. Here's number one coin flip right here. Greg Soto, Daniel Roberts. Daniel Roberts, very good grappler. And AIA. Uh division, or, uh, wrestler, and, you know, trains good camp with, uh, Cesar Gracie, Greg Soto, trained under Kurt Pellegrino, probably the better wrestler of the two, and that's kind of how I see it going, uh, trepidation in this one is Daniel Roberts had a tough time with Forrest Petz, who he should probably should have subbed just straight off, just straight off. Should have submitted him pretty quick, and it ended up going to a split. Uh, I, I like Greg Soto in this. I think he has the better hands, and I think he can work top control for a decision. But again, um, very close fight. Brad Tavares against Phil Baroni. A lot of people don't like Tavares. They don't think he's UFC caliber. This fight will prove whether or not he is or not. Uh, decent boxing, pretty good natural power, good wrestling. Phil Baroni said it pretty eloquently, actually, when he said he's a, you know, a new breed MMA fighter. He's good at mixed martial arts. He's not, he didn't come from any, 
a specific background and come from wrestling and come from boxing. Um, and this one is going to prove whether or not Tavares is UFC caliber. Uh, of course, Phil Baroni always has that chance of landing a hot one on Tavares and putting him out. But I don't think he's going to. I'm going to go with Brad Tavares in this one. I'm going to go second round TKO. I think uh, he's going to avoid an early onslaught. He may get tagged one or two times, but I think he's going to use his offensive wrestling. Um, you know, and weather an early storm, and Baroni's going to gas. Second round, Tavares take him down, jump him out, and Phil Baroni's not going to tap, but it will be a TKO referee stoppage. Clay Guida against Takanori Gomi. This is a tough fight to call as well. I mean, Takanori Gomi, uh, I know my man EBW returns, E-dubs, he did a uh, good article about Takanori Gomi that I thought was pretty well written, uh, echoed my sentiments exactly. Takanori Gomi has never changed as who he is as his fighter. Uh, he's always been the same fighter, whether he's been, you know, getting taken down and grinded out to a decision or he's been KOing people. That's what he does. Uh, he gets on good rolls and he starts KOing people left and right. You know, that's what happens sometimes. Uh, Happy New Year's, everybody. Um, Guida definitely has the possibility of doing that. He's got a lot of cardio. Um, can definitely get the takedowns. Gomi doesn't have amazing takedown defense, but he can hold his own there. Uh, Guida doesn't present really any challenges standing to him. And, uh, you know, I say the later this goes, obviously... Guida has a better shot, so, you know, second, third round, if Gomi hasn't put one on Go Guida, it's, you know, and Guida has a good shin, too. That all being said, I'm going to go with Gomi, KO, late first, early second round. Uh, Guida is very hittable. Yes, he has a good chin. Um, the weigh-ins, to me, kind of, you know, said something. Guida was really pumped like, like he always is, and got up and Gomi's face, and Gomi just stood there, just stone, just stared at him. You don't attribute too much to the weigh-ins because, you know, fighters are who they are, and the weigh-ins really don't make that much of a difference. But I was going to pick Gomi before that, so Gomi and Kale. Dung and Kim against Nate Diaz. Don't like it. Dung him Kim is going to win a decision. Uh, Diaz is not incredibly big for 170. The Diaz brothers love him, love him. Always have a problem with a couple things. Guys that have good cardio, guys that have good wrestling, and guys that can stay out of submissions. Young Young Kim is that guy. He is that guy. And that's not a, it's kind of an homage to a couple other predictors on here's prediction or uh, breakdown of it. I'm not, I'm not stealing it. I'm just saying they did a good job um, explaining it, and I will go with that. Uh, do I want Diaz to win? Yeah, I love the Diaz brothers. Two of my favorite fighters. Um, Diaz could sub him. And um, if Diaz can keep this on the feet, you know, and prevent from getting taken down uh, and on his back, he could definitely, definitely rough up Kim on the feet. That's what I think he needs to do. Work his boxing early, avoid the takedowns, rough him up, and then, you know, make, maybe use knees, you know, the thing is, Kim doesn't work a lot of takedowns from double legs, so you can't really work knees that way. He works them from the clinch, and Diaz isn't necessarily great that way. He's okay in the clinch, but Dong Young Kim, I think, is, is the better of the two, so that's what I'm going to pick. Uh, Antonio McKee against Jacob Volkman. Don't like Antonio McKee. Um, yeah, basically. Uh, I'm going to pick Volkman in this one. Yeah, I know, it's not a lot of people picking McKee in this one. He's a wrestler, good top position, good at staying out of subs, pretty good cardio. Um, yeah. Uh, Volkman, on paper, has the better wrestling credentials. He's way better in scrambles. Uh, his submissions are better. And I don't think McKee can just hold him. Uh, he's not great off his back, um, so he doesn't protect, you know, present great danger uh, to McKee in that aspect, but uh, I gotta believe that McKee can't just hold him down for three rounds and work round and pound like he does to other guys. I think Volkman's gonna scramble, get up, and uh, eventually, you know, start taking McKee's back and work in uh, better positioning. Uh, he's the better overall grappler. That's what I'm gonna pick. Volkman, uh, unanimous or split decision in that one. 
picking a lot of decisions. Hope it doesn't go that way. Brandon Vera against Thiago Silva. Ah, uh, man. I hate, I cannot for the life of me pick Brandon Vera fights. Can't do it. Um, he just, every time I pick him, he loses. And every time I picked him to lose, he wins somehow by split decision or whatever. He's not a killer anymore. Uh, he's basically wasted his prime fighting careers. He's 33 years old at this point. Um, and just on the spot, I was going to pick Brandon Vera by uh, decision, by just outpointing Tiago Silva, because he's the better technical striker. Tiago Silva can't, um, doesn't present any dangers in offensive wrestling. Uh, he doesn't present any wrestler or any danger off his back. He's a top position grappler. That's what he does. He's a BJJ black belt. Not any good off his back unless he can po possibly sweep Vera, but I see Vera being better there um, as well. So Brandon Vera, better in all areas, except for I don't think Vera has the uh, defensive counterpunching boxing. He's always good with kicks. When you box him up, it presents some problems for him. When you push him against the cage and try to grind on him, it uh, presents some problems for him. So can Brandon Vera win this fight? Absolutely, if Brandon Vera is more technical and just does what he does. I think he needs to walk Tiago Silva down, put him against the cage, you know, do that way. Um, work leg kicks. But Tiago Silva, I think, has the better boxing. He puts a hot one on him. Tiago Silva. Second round TKO. <laughs> I'm stupid for picking that one, but I'm going to do it. Uh, Chris Lieben against Brian Stan. This is your upset special right here. I'm not necessarily going to pick it. Just wait. Hold on. Hear me out on this one. Brian Stan has the acuma to beat Chris Lieben. Um, I probably shouldn't have said it like that in that particular manner, uh, but just pretend I didn't say that. And let me explain myself. Brian Stan, um, I think he's got the intelligence not to get into a brawl, which most people don't. He's got um, the technical striking uh, to kind of outpoint, stay away, cut angles, um, leg kicks, stay away from Chris's power, to like kind of like Bisping did, a couple other guys. Um, and... I don't think Lieben is going to jump for takedowns, and which has been Brian Stan's Achilles heel. Well, I mean, nobody's Phil Davis, so uh, Lieben's not Phil Davis, so he's not going to do that, and he's going to stand with him the entire time. So Stan definitely has the ability to do it. Chris Lieben, can he submit Stan? Yes. Can he knock him out? Yes. I'm going to go with Brian Stan by <laughs> unanimous decision. I could do really terrible on this card, and that's why I said that, because uh, I'm, I'm going against the grain on a lot of these picks. Frank Edgar against Gray Maynard. Here we go. How much time I got? All right. Everybody knows what both of these guys need to do to win the fight. And if you don't, I'm going to explain it to you. Frank Edgar, what he needs to do, very good angles, pick his angles, throw combinations, stay out of, in front of Gray Maynard. Um, Edgar also has the tendency to you know, work in, throw combinations, and then back straight out with his hands down. Not good against a power puncher like Gray Maynard. I still don't think he has good KO power. But anyways, uh, he needs to, you know, do that. Basically, not run, but he needs to not get anywhere near any of Gray's power. He's the better technical wrestler, I think, Gray is. He's got more power. Um... He could definitely push him against the cage. Frank needs to just use his footwork. He should have been working on his cardio, takedown defense, and speed. That's it. That's all he should have worked for this fight. Because he just needs to keep it on the feet and just box him up and use leg kicks. Basically, leg kicks early. Um, destroy Gray's lead front leg is what he needs to do. And prevent Gray from getting into those power doubles and, you know, being explosive with his takedowns. I think that's what he needs to do. Gray Maynard obviously needs to wear Frankie out, slow down his speed like he did in the first fight, push him against the cage, clinch him up, you know, land some elbows, punches in the clinch, knee him, wear on him. And I don't think he's going to do it. Frankie Edgar, submission, third round. I think he's going to wear Gray out. I think uh, Gray's going to shoot for a sloppy takedown. He's going to get guillotined or Frankie's going to take his back, rear naked choke. Those are my predictions. I could do terrible, but 
We'll see. Guys, stay metal. Later.